So there's two cinematics here that apparently we only get to see next week. We don't get to see them this week yet. So uh, let's quickly let's quickly watch them. I don't know how long they are. I've never watched these. So let's quickly see here. Seems very angry. My Primus, you've been trapped here all this time. You brought my sigil to Zoval's lair. Forgive me, Master. We were only. Oh shit. Oh shit. He is coming. Prepare yourselves. We make our stand now. All right, so that worked in his fucking favor, which is quite interesting. Let's just watch this again. Were those sort of chains of domination, were those the reason he could not remember? They seem to make a big deal about them disintegrating, right? That, that seems to be a big deal. Remember what we've spoken about long before. Nothing that Blizzard puts into a cinematic is ever there by accident. When Blizzard puts something into a cinematic, it's there because it has to be there. They want to showcase something with it. I don't think, uh, so someone asked me about the runes on the Primus. These runes are pretty much present everywhere, right? Th these runes are present all throughout the Shadowlands. These runes are magical. Uh, the magic that they hold, though, the question is, are these runes of the First Ones? Are these runes of the Eternal Ones? Are these runes of Domination? The question seems to be endless. However, and this is why I wouldn't make too big of a deal of this right now, the Primus is a rune carver. He is a rune smith. He, he's the greatest blacksmith uh, that's ever lived. He uses runes. Remember, how did Zuval learn how to make Frostmourne or the, domination, the Helm of Domination? From the Primus. The Primus knows how to place these runes on armors and weapons in order to empower them, right? So the fact that he has these uh, these runes on himself, that does not necessarily bother me. My Primus, you've been trapped here all this time. You brought my sigil to Zoval's lair. Forgive me, Master. We were only. Forgive me, Master. We were only. She almost seems afraid of him, which is well. Uh, it just lends itself to my distrust of the Eternal Ones, let's say that. Uh, I half expected him to smite her down right there. Which, um, I do want to go back though and say that, does this not look eerily similar to the leaked Jailer image that we saw long ago? May have been that Blizzard decided to change their minds, or it may have been that Blizzard just, you know, they sort of labeled it wrong it's not the jailer this is the primus what i find more interesting is how the primus turned into this after he was reunited with his sigil 
That is interesting to me. That sort of bothers me. Like, why? Why was he this lanky, sort of skinny, sort of weird-looking, death, deathly fellow with no beard? And then as soon as his sigil comes back, he turns into what we can consider to be his, his true form, right? The form of who he really is. I don't know. I have no answers. Uh, Nico Spider, you, you suggest that it might be his memories that came back? It could be. Although then we're getting into the sort of realm where they can make themselves look like anything, right? Which has sort of been proven with Sargeras. If you remember correctly, Sargeras actually fooled Archimon and Kil'jaeden. They got fooled because Sargeras appeared to them as a being of light. So he, he basically disguised himself as something else. And that's how he approached them. And it was only because of Velen's devotion to the light that he was eventually able to see through it, right? Now, this would mean that none of these Eternal Ones actually look the way that they look. We simply see what they want us to see. So the plot just thickens and it just proves even more that they cannot be trusted because they are not what they appear to be. To Zoval Slayer! Forgive me, Master. We were only... I want to say, though, Blizzard is doing so many things so amazingly well in this expansion so far. Everything we do, we lose. We keep making the wrong decisions at the wrong time that leads Zuval closer and closer to his final victory, right? Uh, in previous expansions, we were sort of always putting a stop to some of the things that they wanted to achieve. So we kept having to almost, they kept having to change their plans so that, you know, the, so that they could finally get the thing that they wanted to do. Like we kept stopping them. Only now, it seems like every single time we do something, it actually works in the favor of Zuval, not in the favor of us. Every single time, just just here, we brought the the sigil to the rune carver in order to understand the power of the uh, of the sigil. The rune carver then turns into the Primus. Unfortunately, the Primus is still trapped within Torghast. This is the realm of Zuval. So now Zuval has his sigil. Sigil is right there. He senses it. Senses it. It's clear that he was looking at them as they were doing it. So this is exactly what he wanted. He wanted them to reunite the Primus with the sigil so that he could take it. He is coming. Prepare yourselves. We make our stand now. And again, the fear. The, the the fear continues. He is coming. Uh, there's fear in his voice, and I keep going back to it. Why is it that every single one of these Eternal Ones are so afraid uh, of Zuval? Why are they all so afraid of him? I mean, if they were indeed brothers and sisters, and they were made by the same entities... They would be of equal power. They, they would be able to stand against him. And it doesn't appear as if they can. It literally doesn't appear as, as if they can. Which is very interesting to me. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. We'll again react to it first. I will resist you to my last, Soval. Should you strike me down, my sigil will be lost to you forever. <laughs> the hell just happened there? Okay, 
there's a couple of interesting things here. Should you strike me down, my sigil will be lost to you forever. Should you strike me down, my sigil will be lost to you forever. So perhaps we were wrong previously saying that Zuval doesn't wish to kill his brothers and sisters. It's more a case of they can't die. They seem to be intrinsically linked to their sigils. If they died, their sigils die with them. So there's a connection to it. That's very interesting. Because remember, we did say it doesn't seem like Zuval wants to kill anyone. It, it, it appears almost as if he, he really just wants to destroy the system. But now we learn, no, no, the sigils are linked. It's, 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 it's almost as if the sigil gains its power from the lifeblood of the Eternal One. So once the Eternal One dies, the sigil dies with it. Very curious. No. There is another way. Mourn, please. Very curious. So that's why the Mourn Blades exist. You see, because a Mourn Blade doesn't actually kill someone. It simply transforms them. It takes their soul, but it doesn't kill them. Even if, as we view it, their life has ended, they are still very much alive. They're just now in the blade. They're part of the blade. So the blade has the ability to split the soul from the being. And in this instance, Zuval actually created a completely different Morn Blade. You see, he created Frostmorn as a way to take the soul out of a body. He created Shalomorn, or Kingsmorn as Blizzard wants to describe it, even though I think it's a massively missed opportunity. Uh, it should have been called Shalomorn. You see, Shalomorn does something completely different. Shalomorn splits you from the sigil. That's the job that Shalomorn has. So a Morn Blade for each occasion, if you will. Ramonia may be a Morn Blade as well, yes. The power of Zuval is in full display here. The Primus is master tactician, very good fighter. I mean, there's a reason why he was placed at the head of the Shadowlands' army, because he clearly is a, a very good fighter. And guess what he could do to Zuval? Like, guess. Nothing. Fuck all. He, he literally had to stand there and watch as Zuval takes it away. And Zuval doesn't even seem to break a sweat, which scares the living shit out of me because maybe Blizzard wasn't wrong when they said Titan plus plus. This guy clearly isn't weak. Now, I want to see something very quickly here when they were sort of both shooting beams at each other. Will be lost. Show me the beams. Show me the beams. There we go. All right, so that's clearly Maldraxian in nature. And that's the old void. I'm wondering if they would have a similar effect, although it does seem like whatever the fuck it's creating there in the middle seems very interesting to me. Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen. That's literally all I can say here. All I can say is holy shit. How powerful is this guy? The fact that everyone is afraid of him. Everyone sort of stands back whenever he enters the room. Everyone, everyone knows that should he get free, they're fucked. There's no way for them to stop him. And then when he finally does come face to face with a titan or an eternal one that should be able to fight him off, there's nothing. There's not even, there's not even a fight. He just doesn't care. He takes what he wants, takes what he needs, and then he leaves. And end of discussion. Duval's voice speaks way too slow, even for derpy animation. 
I like his voice again. I think it's a cool voice. Enoch, well, he controls Anduin at this point, so really it was just him and Anduin subduing the Primus and then taking the, the sigil. The question is, what victory? What victory is he after? That, that I think, is the big question. This is the one question that I don't have an answer for. What does he want?